Good afternoon, church. I want to thank you all for giving a nothing like me the opportunity to come before God's people and to be able to talk to you just for a little bit about burning up the heretics on their own altars of heresy. See, there's a reason we need to talk about this. See, some people could be afraid to deal with tough situations. Some people could be afraid when they feel like they don't know enough to deal with those who are attacking them and those that are persecuting God's people. But I remember a man named David when he was young who stood up against Goliath when everyone else was afraid and wanted to run away. See, we got some giants that have come against us, that have left us hanging, that have decided to use power and influence to change what God has said. See, we're going to go deep today because I'm going to tell you one thing. The church of Christ is the pillar and ground of truth. Even the person who was baptized, who has God's spirit with the Bible, that can study and read, will be part of the pillar and ground of truth. God didn't say that you had to be built up somewhere in somebody's place, in somebody's university, to use the power he gave you with the Holy Spirit and the word. So today, we're going to go back to the book. We're going to find it in the house. And we're going to be free, never again tossed to and fro with these winds of doctrine if we'll decide today to see what God said and stand on it. To start out, I want to go to the text that we have for today. Let's go to... Second Chronicles 34. And we're going to look at verse 4 and 5. And y'all are going to see something really deep here. Second Chronicles 4 and 5. Y'all got to say I got it. Let's go ahead and read. Verse 4 and 5. It says, and they break down the altars of Balaam in the presence. And the images that were on high above them, he cut them down, and the groves, and the carved images, and the molten images. He broke in pieces and made dust of them, and strove it upon the graves of them that had sacrificed unto them. And he burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars, and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. Sometimes got to stand up and burn the bones of those who are sacrificing to the wrong God and causing our people to perish. See, th this is real serious because we got brothers and sisters in the church, babes, and we're all working to bring people. We're all working to lead people to Christ because we all want to go to heaven together. But when you have a situation where somebody's bringing forth heresy, they are destroying the church. They are subverted. They subvert whole households. This is what we're facing today. And sometimes people will say, well, don't stand up and say too much. It makes it seem like you're rough. It makes it seem like you're mean. You should just let everybody fit in together. But if you do that, people have to go to hell. How many words does Satan have to change to get Adam and Eve evicted out of the garden? One word. We see the first eviction in history. And they had to die. Is God playing with us today when people want to change one word here, five words there, or 60,000 words? Is he playing with us? 
See, it's time we get serious and make sense out of things. See, sometimes when you don't know exactly what's going on, it can be fearful trying to stand up to giants. But today, we'll know. We'll know exactly what God said, and we'll see clearly what's happening. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 23, and we're going to look at verse 5 through 7. As we go here, just know we're going to be challenged today. And he because, put down go ahead, say it again. the idolatrous priest. He put down who? The idolatrous priest. Okay. On whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the city of Judah, in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the hosts of heaven. And he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem into the brook of Kidron and burned it at the brook of Kidron and stamped it small to powder and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people. And he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the houses, house of the Lord where the women wove hangings for the grove. Hold on one second. Who burned Who burned the incense? Let's go back and read. It's an open book test. Who burned the incense? And he put down the idolatrous priest who the put, kings of Judah. He put down the idolatrous priest. All right? So we got some priests in the text, right? Who told the idolatrous priest to burn the incense? Whom the kings of Judah had ordained. Ooh, the kings of Judah ordained this. See, the Bible tells us we have kings and priests in the church today. We are all kings and priests. But see, the problem is, is when we get caught up and we start to look at some men as kings, when we look and we say the big three, four, five, six, seven, we get to the point where we start to raise men up into positions that they should not be. I mean, I understand the power of something that a man does in the church. But when you start calling a man pioneer, you forget the fact that pioneer means that they paved the way that somebody else didn't pay. But I remember a man named Peter with the other apostles, 3,000 baptisms on the same day. That never happened before? So what exactly are you pioneering? And I'm not trying to disrespect because I love my brothers. But see, there's some of the people who follow my brothers, who look up to them, who are starting to teach different things in the name of scholarship. The problem is, is the scholarship is not scholar. See, if you're going to have powerful information and you're going to know the truth, you need to open your mouth and tell the whole truth. See, don't just come and say, well, we can't really understand what God said unless we understand Greek, and then say, well, look, you guys can't know the truth unless you know Greek, but then at the same time say, well, we can't understand anything that God said because there's no pure Bible, and then at the same time, when you want to make a point, you say in the original Greek, but you've never seen an original copy of anything. That's what you call being deceitful. <laughs> See, when you want to teach a lesson, that says that you can hop, skip, and jump, and dance, and boogie bounce with every single thing that the kids are doing. And you say, in the original Greek, it really said, and you know nobody in the room knows Greek. I think it was Paul that said that we should speak in a language easy to be understood. So if I can speak to you in English, why do I have to go to Greek to come back to English to explain the big Greek word that I said that you don't know about? See, we're getting tricked. Jesus is the best teacher that ever came to this earth. When did you ever hear him say one big word? See, we get tricked because a man will put on a suit and say some big words. And we'll get lost because we're like, what in the world did he say? He'll take you to what you do not know 
in order to bring you back to something that he wants to teach you, and it'll seem like it makes sense because you were shocked by what he said. People say, oh, well, if I say the word syllogism, people will get excited and happy. <laughs> so was it the syllogism that brought people to Christ, or was it just the bare, plain teaching about the blood and the cross and it being a propitiation for our sins? See, it's simple. We're getting tricked. And I want everybody to know we're getting tricked. See, on Facebook, I can't do it like this. See, on Facebook, it looks like I'm being rough because I'm hitting with a verse and I'm saying you're a liar at the same time and I'm saying something else, but you can't hear my tone. You can't hear my mood. You can't know that I love you and I want the Church of Christ to stand back where it belongs, the pillar and ground of truth. We have God's spirit. We have God's spirit. We have the word of God. See, people hide it from us, though, but we got the word of God. See, they don't want us to know exactly what the truth is because if you don't know what the truth is, it's just like the Vatican had with his pe their people. They said, we don't want the people to have the word of God in their language. And if they have the word of God in their language, they will leave the faith. The, you would not stay in their church if you could read what the Bible said. The Bible tells you what they do is evil. Can y'all trust those people? Could you, the Inquisition, where Christians were killed, 50 million of our brothers and sisters killed over a long, 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 long number of centuries. What would you do if you found out that the same people who killed you for having the Bible is now writing the text that these heretics are using to tell you that what you've done all the time is wrong? Have you not wondered why they say you need to take that name off the building? They say Church of Christ is not a name, it's a title. Therefore, it should not be called that. That's foolishness. You want to know why? Y'all want to know why? See, God has an internal dictionary in the Bible. So when God talks about something, he explains what he means and builds you up line upon line, line upon line, line upon line, line upon line, upon line, upon line precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. So when you see a word, you understand what God is talking about. Right. So y'all want to know something about a name? See, people try to act like God don't know what a name is. See, we see where it says, salute one another with the holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. He's calling us something. We see where Corinthians 12, 27 says, ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Y'all calling King James. I like that. <laughs> and y'all going to see why in a second. We see the definition of what God calls a name in the beginning of the Bible in Genesis. The Bible lets us know that God gave Adam the ability to name the animals, and God brought the animals before him for him to name them, and whatever he called them was the name thereof. So if he calls the church the church of Christ, that's the name thereof. They want to say Christ is a title. No, Christ is a name. Nobody else has their, that name. Everybody in heaven and on earth that belongs to him wears that name in the family. But people want to trick us. They want us to think we're stupid because we didn't go to a school. Because we can't speak Greek like them. When did the Bible ever say we need to be able to speak Greek to have the Spirit of God bring souls to Christ and teach the doctrine. Now, that ain't nothing wrong with education, but if you're going to teach about some knowledge and act like you got knowledge, you better tell the truth. So I'm going to tell you all today that people are lying to us in the church. Y'all want to see? Y'all want to see where people lie to us? I'll make it simple. We'll take this. I will challenge the smartest person who's a scholar to this any day. Can God lie? We're going to burn up heretics, right? Y'all down? Y'all down to burn up some heretics? All right, we're going to start with me. If I lie, get me. Here we go. Somebody call me out. There's a camera right there. Did I lie? There's a camera right there. Did I lie? 
There's a camera right there. Call me a liar. Call it out. Liar. Thank you. There's nothing wrong with standing up and telling the truth because if we don't, our kids will perish. These people will take our kids to hell because they'll get us to not believe what God said off of a lie. So let's watch. We're going to show, we're going we gonna to see where the Bible lets us know. We're going to show. <laughs> I'm going to show two examples. I ain't got that much time left. Mark chapter 1, verse 2. Y'all ready? Mark chapter 1, verse 2. Now, here's something that's going to trip y'all out. Y'all heard people say in the original Greek, it says, right? In the original Greek. Now, when they say the, how many do you think it is? One. Ooh, that could be dangerous. Y'all want to see? I'm going to show y'all two different Bibles made from two different texts that these guys are quoting, but they're not telling you where it came from. Watch this. Mark chapter 1, verse 2 in the King James. What does it say? As it is written, As it is written in, the prophets, in the prophets. Is that plural or singular? Plural. Plural. The prophets. Right? Check this out. As it is written in the prophets. So that's more than one. DC, brother DC. Mark chapter 1, verse 2 in the New American Standard and any of the other new versions except for the New King James. What does it say? Even as it is written, written in Isaiah the Isaiah prophet. Isaiah the what? The prophet. Singular? Wait, that one said the what? Prophets. Prophets. That one said what? Written in Isaiah the prophet. The prophet. Wait, one is saying it's in Isaiah. The other one is saying it's in the prophets. Now, y'all got to be real now because y'all call me out. Somebody lying, right? Can it be both? Can it be in the prophets and in Isaiah? Now, what if what we're reading ain't in Isaiah? Would somebody be lying? I'm going to let y'all see today what's really going on. Mark chapter 1, verse 2, New American Standard. That text says that it's written in Isaiah the prophet. Now, what does that text say in verse 2? Behold. Behold. Uh, now, we're going to look for behold in the Bible. Behold. I, I will send my messenger, my messenger before thy face. Before thy face. Now, who we, shall prepare thy way. Prepare thy way. The uh -huh. voice of one crying That's in the wilderness. Three. That's verse 3. We got to stay on verse 2. Okay. Verse 2 says, behold, Even as it is written, uh -huh, as it is written in so Isaiah the somewhere. prophet, uh -huh. behold, behold, I send my messenger uh -huh. before thy face. Now we got a problem. That behold, I send my messenger is not in Isaiah. That means that book is lying, and that's the word of God. And if it is, then the word of God cannot lie. How in the world is this Bible telling a lie? And I'll prove it. Behold, I send my messenger. Somebody grab me Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. What does it say? Malachi 3, 1. Behold. Behold. Whoa. I send my messenger. I send my messenger. And he shall prepare the way uh -huh. before me. Behold, I send my messenger is in Malachi 3, not in Isaiah. So if you say it's written in the prophets like the King James, you told the truth. If you said it's written in Isaiah, you told a lie. Now, Adam and Eve got kicked out for one. Do we want to play this game? All the new Bibles are written from somewhere else. A totally different Greek text. There's two. See, they say in the Greek, if I showed you the Greek text from the Byzantine text or the text of Receptus, and I'm sorry for saying these big names, and I show you the Vatican Alexandrian text, You'll see that the Vatican text says the same thing as that says. And the text that the King James came from says this. And if you look in Malachi, it's there. If the King James told the truth, this Bible lies. Notice 1 Peter, I mean 2 Peter. The Bible told us that people were going to bring feigned words. That means words that are meant to imitate God's word in order to purposely deceive you. See, we got heretics, when they want to tell us something different, they go to the new text. They go to the other Greek that the Vatican made. See, the Vatican don't care about what God said. They killed us. So in 1881, the Jesuits who wanted to kill Christians took over the United Bible Society and supplanted a totally different text with 60,000 different changes. It ain't the same word. As a matter of fact, if you got an NIV in here, I'll pay you $20 if you can read the text and tell me what Acts chapter 837 says. We're going to be here for a while. Somebody better give me a Snickers. Because <laughs> it ain't there. It's gone. 
And the other Bibles make brackets or italicize it to make it look like it was, uh, it's not supposed to be there. They, they are casting doubt on God's word with what they call textual criticism. You can't criticize God. One last thing I got to show you guys, and it's super important. And I'm sorry I went over, but this is so important. Why? Because I love my brothers and sisters, and I'm tired of scholars coming telling us about this new great text and how it's so good and how your old King James is bad and you need to get rid of it. And it's a lie. The King James came from the text that was here before. That's why when the Bible says in Jude 3, 4, you can trace the King James back to uh, Antioch, Syria, and Israel, where, where God's people had the text. You can trade, uh, take that text back to Egypt only, where they hated God and had false gods and multiple gods, and I can show you a lot. And I dare anybody to challenge me and say that I'm lying, and we'll, we can go all night with changes. But let's look a little bit deeper, because this is what I have noticed, and, and I'm going to speed through it. I got one more verse, but I got to touch the situation. So I've seen a man named Orpheus, who I used to look up to. But this man decided that he was going to change the way that worship happens. And so I saw him and H. Clay having a conversation, and I see some scholarly gentleman jump in and talk about some big group of men that nobody can touch their breath and height and width and all this stuff. That's idolatry. You done just made this man who sins just like us, just like God. If you were talking about the big three, I would think you would be talking about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But you can't name drop somebody else's name who has done powerful things and then come bringing heresy. And that's what happened. And so this man tries to use Ephesians chapter 4, and he tries to take one verse out and say, I need somebody to help me understand because I'm going to do this lesson. And in this lesson, I need to understand what you guys think about it. Does unity come like with... Uh, the doctrine, or does unity is unity just something that we have and we just need to hold on to it? See, when I saw that, I said, you know what? The Bible tells us that we're not ignorant to the wiles of the devil. And I knew exactly what was going on right then. I said, you know what, uh, Brother Orpheus? I love you, but it seems like you're trying to set up a situation to go ahead and make leeway for you to be able to teach people to rock and roll and beatbox and dance and jump and hop and skip in service. That's what it looks like you're trying to do. I ain't going to falsely accuse you. But what it looked like is, right? So he said he came to just talk to us a little bit about getting some information, right? And I'm already like, look, you guys see that this guy is a heretic. Why is he even on here talking? Why are you opening up a venue for him to teach his garbage? Because there's brothers and sisters who aren't that uh, strong yet on milk that will get deceived and lose their soul because they want to dance and, and, and jump around and all that stuff. Like, like, like the guy who is known by the big three. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But God is so good, though, because you know what God did? See, God allowed another brother to find a video where this dude taught this lesson a long time ago. He already taught the lesson that it was okay to do what you wanted to do. God ain't trying to hold you up in your praise. He, he already got these things set up, and it's out there, and he's trying to make it look like he's getting information, and he's already teaching it. And so he's teaching in a way to open up the doors for other people to be able to come in with falsehood and still call each other brothers. See, and I asked this man, I said, look, I said, okay, the International Church of Christ or these other groups that you're hanging around with, the Disciples of Christ, let me just cut to the chase. Are they Christians saved with the Holy Spirit, yes or no? You know it took like three days for a master? I left, went and did some business, worked out. I probably lost some weight. And this man is still trying to talk around them not being Christians. See, he was stuck between a rock and a hard place. Why? Because somebody who believes in the word of God calls him out. And says, look, if you're going to throw this stuff out your mouth, stand up and eat it right here. And I'm going to hold you to it, and I'm going to show you that I realize what you're doing. And either you're going to stand up and be right or you're going to repent. He had to repent once. But that ain't stopping him from doing the same thing. One more, one more set of verses real quick. One more set of verses. I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm about to give y'all the strength back that God gave y'all. All right? So these guys call themselves scholars. So 
one day they decided that we're all going to get together and just attack Dave because he's stupid and he don't know nothing. He ain't been a spirit. And I said, you know what? The King James is the perfect word of God. He didn't like that. They're like, oh, well, you know what? If you think the King James is perfect, then uh, that's a translation issue, and you must be crazy. I said, yeah, that's funny, though, because I read books from the Jesuits, and they say the same thing. The Catholic Church say the same thing. Oh, wait, they're teaching in your schools, too. We're sending people to school, and the Vatican is sending teachers there who will tell you that they go with the Jesuits who kill Christians. And this is who are teaching us scholarships. So let me show y'all how silly this scholarship is. Y'all want to see it? Because I only got like 30 seconds left. They're giving me grace here, and I love them for it. <laughs> All right. So let's go to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 4, 5. And see, when they wanted to get me about the errors in the King James Bible, this is what they brought up. And I said, okay, so you're saying the King James got errors. Prove it. Give me every single thing you got. Bring the best you have. They brought like 23 things. This is one of them. I said, bring all of it, show me the errors in the King James, and I'll show you that scholars don't read. Do it. So they brought this. 2 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 5. Let me know when y'all got it. If you ain't going, say, I ain't going. 2 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 5. Verse 5. Verse 5 says, and the, and the thickness of it. This is talking about a container that Solomon has, a big, huge container. Was a hand breath. A hand breath, uh huh. And the brim of it was like work of the brim of a cup. Uh huh. So it goes up like with this. flowers of lilies. Uh huh. And it was received and, and held 3,000 baths. 3,000 baths. So this verse says 3,000 baths. So now let's go to 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 26. And I'm only doing this to let y'all see how powerful God is. Second, I'm sorry, 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 26. Please forgive me for taking so long, but this is super important. Uh huh. So this is the same thing, right? You see the same description? Hand breath thick. Go ahead. Uh huh. Uh huh. Whoa. What? This verse said two thousand. What did the other verse say? Three. They said, you know what? This is obviously an error. Y'all see an error? Y'all see an error? This is the King James, right? The best scholars in the world, all the guys in the Church of Christ groups and the guys who are brainiacs, they, this is what they brought. And 20, 22 more. So it seems like an error in the King James. We got a problem, right? Right? So this is what I said. I said, hey, you said that there was an error in the King James, right? They said, yeah. I said, did you read it? Of course I read it. I'm a scholar. Oh, okay. So you read it because you're a scholar. Okay. So it should be an error here, and we should be able to clearly look through and see it, and there should be nothing that says that it's correct because you're a scholar and you read it, right? Yeah. I said, bring all your other scholars. Go run and get every single one and bring everybody here who's going to stand on this error because they all agree. Bring them. And then I said this. Let's go back to the first verse and see what God really said because the Bible tells us that God will put a stumbling block of offense before those who turn away from him. So you want to call God a liar? You want to say his word is not true? He'll leave two things there for you to read because you like to match words so that you'll stumble and fall over it and be lost forever because you didn't like him. Now let's see this. Let's see what he said the first time. What did the first verse say? And the thickness of it was uh -huh. a hand brim. Uh -huh. And the brim of it was like the work of the brim of a cup uh -huh. with flowers of lilies. Uh -huh. And it received and well, held 3,000 baths. It what? It received. It received. And what? held. And held. 3,000 baths. The Bible tells us that every word of God is pure. Every word of God. That means if you get rid of one, you'll lose everything he says. See, scholars don't necessarily read. They match words. So they'll miss something that God said. I'm going to finish up because i got zero minutes left. Received and contained. What does that mean? It has the ability to hold something. What does the verse say? It contains. It contains. 2,000 bands. It contains 2,000, but it can hold 3,000. It's two-thirds full. That's not an error. That's God letting you know how silly you are for trying to attack him and tell everybody he's wrong. And with all your degrees and all your Greek, you couldn't read English. To tell the people that God did not lie. See, when these people come at us telling us what they know and how great they are because they know Greek, sometimes we just got to slow down in the King James Bible because I'm going to tell you all the other ones come from the Vatican, and I'll prove it. 
We need to slow down and read what they're saying and go through the whole text and read because I found 23 of those that proved that every single error that they said was in the King James was wrong and they made a mistake. I called all of them out and they all ran. All of them. I said, bring yourselves out and fight. I only got one smooth stone in the King James Bible. Come get some. <laughs> Come on. Come on. The King James Bible is the truth. It comes from a text that God's people held. The new Bibles, I will prove to you, I got it in my, my, my folder. You can actually see where the new text in the Nestle Align uh, 27th edition, page 45, in the introduction. The scholars won't tell you this, and I keep asking them to, they just keep hiding it. But it actually says that it was made, a new translation, new translations were made from a text with an agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Society. This was the first time that that text ever appeared in history. Your forefathers, before 1881, could not have that text. One of them is called the Vaticanus. It's set in the Vatican Library. Nobody even used it. So when you look at these new words and these new Bibles saying new things and these heretics using these things, that's what it's from. So we need to stand up and say, oh, 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 you saying that we don't know enough? You saying that we can't understand the truth? Start standing on what God said. Start standing. There's no reason to have fear of a heretic with a degree. Because God's word is so much more powerful than the wisdom of man. And I'm going to call it the wisdom of a man because if you don't see the study in the Bible, then God didn't create it. So a man creates it to give himself power over the people. And with that power, it can be dangerous if he don't tell you, hey, you know what, I'm telling you in the Greek, but it's really true. I'm telling you in the Greek, and I'm using this text, but it's really from the Vatican. They just took the extra books out to trick you. That's why your NIV don't have Acts chapter 8. Because it says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ being the Son of God is what he said, the confession that he was going to build the church off of. That ain't in the NIV Bible. All right, so I'm out of time. So I just want to say, look, if you, if you are here and you belong to Christ, you're in a good position. But if you do not belong to Christ, Jesus Christ gave his body to be broken. He gave his blood to be a propitiation for our sins. It could satisfy the wrath of God for us. We don't have to perish. But we could be one with Christ. So if there's anybody here that does not belong to Christ, that is under the sound of my voice, there should be water right here, right now. There's no better time than to do what God said. We see that the people who are in science don't necessarily read. So if you have had doubt, there's no reason for it because God's word is true, pure. There is no error, period. Church, amen. I know it was hard for the brother to stop, and it's hard to stop a preacher when a preacher stops.